Hey, what is up, everybody? Michael Crump back here again, talking about the latest and the greatest in PlayStation homebrew news and much, much more. So we currently have a WebKit exploit that works with 4.03, 4.50, and 4.51. Obviously, there's a new FTP elf that we can load to make it just a little bit easier to get an FTP server. We also have Slayer's Gorvi's BD-JB, which basically takes a number of tries, typically 25 to 30 tries, in order to get an FTP server. And then we have John Tornblom, who has been very quiet here lately, but has absolutely been working. And so before we even go any further, what has been achieved has been arbitrary read-write on a PlayStation 5 version 3.20. Now, the rest of this video, I'm going to walk through what he currently has and how to build an ISO or if you want to download and burn an ISO and what it looks like on your PlayStation 5. But keep in mind, this isn't going to do anything. So this is just a early proof of concept that basically they got arbitrary read-write working on a PlayStation 5 3.20. With that being said, let's just go ahead and let's jump straight into it. So over here on John's GitHub page, he has been quietly working in a separate branch here called PS5 IPv6 UAF exploit work in progress. So all of the work has been done in that branch right here, and we can see he's been pretty active, so up to four hours ago. So if we go over to the commits here, we can really see that kind of work at least started publicly right around October the 10th, and then obviously today on October the 11th, 2022. So if we take a look at this repo, there's again the kind of instructions on how to build this, which we'll go over in just a moment. And then if we go into samples and then we go to PS5 IPv6, this folder right here, well, this is the PS5 IPv6 use after free exploit that is based off of the work and the research that the Flow Zero did that was disclosed on Hacker One. So John, for the most part, gives you instructions in here on how that you can create your own ISO. And I'm going to walk you through doing that on my end in just a moment. Now, following the same kind of structure that I've been working with in my last video, I've started putting these files over here on my GitHub page. So for this ISO image, I've simply built this already for you. And so if you want to just go ahead and play with it, you can just download this ISO image right here and then burn it using something like Image Burn and you're good to go. But if you want to learn how to build this yourself, maybe there's another update that I haven't gotten to creating an ISO image. Well, then the next little steps here is going to be good for you. So the first thing that I would do is I would just go ahead and copy all of these commands out and just put them in a notepad because we're going to be running each and every one of them. Now, I'm over here in Windows, and I'm using Windows Subsystem for Linux, and this is an Ubuntu image. Pretty much any sort of Ubuntu image would work with this if you want to build these source files here. So I have a folder here on my desktop that's just called Source, and so we're going to kind of go line by line with those instructions that we just copied from his page. So let's go ahead and let's begin sudo command here. And so I already had everything downloaded, so it didn't take me very long. It may take yours a while to download all of these different types of packages. So like there's a open JDK or the open Java development kit, and then there's a few more things here. The next command was his git clone command. So we're just gonna go ahead and we're going to run that. And depending on your internet speed, that shouldn't take too long either to download. And let's just keep going down through this. So there was this ln command. There's another ln command here. And then there is this make command. And keep in mind that when you see all of these type of errors, they absolutely do not matter. Everything will burn and will complete as intended. Next up, there's another make command here. And so there is what that looks like. It just says entering directory and it says leaving the directory. 
And then finally, this last make command here. And so exactly your screen should look just like mine. And now you want to double check that the samples that you have matches what he has on his site. So if you go into your source, actually not right there, we're going to do a listing here. So we're going to CD into BDJ SDK. And now we're going to do a directory listing. We're going to go into samples. And from right here, what you can tell is, is that we are missing one of the samples that he has in that other branch. So we'll run explorer.exe right here, period, and get a Windows Explorer instance up. And from right here, we can tell that the PS5 IPv6 UAF exploit is not over in our sample folder over on our Ubuntu instance right here. So we're going to need to add it. We can go back to the project page and go to code. And then right here where it says download zip, you're going to want to go ahead and download a zip. But do make sure that you are inside of the branch that has the PS5-IPv6. Okay, and so just open up that zip file. And from here, we're going to navigate into samples. And right there is the IPv6 sample. And we're just going to drag and drop that into the samples folder in my Ubuntu instance. Now we can go ahead and we can build that final ISO image. Okay, so we need to go back to directories here. And from here, we'll just go ahead and clear out our screen. And now we're going to run this make command right here. Now, if you get this error, that just means that you need to be running it in sudo. So let's go ahead and let's do that. We'll add sudo here. And there it goes. It is now building that ISO image. And so now at this point, if you see this, then that means you do have a successful build. Again, this is going to be a lot more helpful in case there is other changes to this and you just want to try the very latest one, maybe before I get around to updating my ISO image. Now we can run an explorer.exe period again here. And what I would recommend is going over into the samples and then the IPv6. And then right there is the ISO image that it just created. Now, I would go ahead and take this ISO image right here, and I'd go ahead and copy it. So we'll go copy here. And now I'll just paste that somewhere where you can easily get to. So I'm just going to create another folder right here. We'll just name this John-BDJB, and we will go ahead and paste that ISO image in here. Okay, and so now we need to burn that image to a Blu-ray disc. So let's go to image burn here and let's go to write an image file to disc and let's just drag and drop that ISO image. And now we'll go ahead and press the right button here and then press yes to that. And in just a moment, we will have a working ISO image that is burnt to a disc that we can put inside of our PlayStation 5. Okay, there it goes. Now let's head over to the PlayStation 5 and give it a shot. Okay, and so here is my PS5 that's setting on 3.20. So let's go over to settings here and we'll go to system and then system software, and then console information. And there we go. We are at a lovely 3.20 just right here. So we'll go ahead and we will back back out of that. And I already have the disc inserted. So we'll go to media and then we'll do play Blu-ray disc. And so up at the top, we can see initializing sockets and then triggering UAF. And I am going to go ahead and zoom in on this section. There isn't anything else that shows on the screen. Okay, and so we'll continue here. Okay, and so there it goes. Now it did take me a right around five tries to get here. So it really wasn't that many attempts in order to get this working. But at this point, we can see that it is doing a lot of things that was very similar to the other BDJB ISO image that we had. But what we can see is down here at the bottom, we have arbitrary read and write that has been achieved on a 3.20 system. 
and now it says done. And that's pretty much it. So we could obviously go over here and we can try the settings, but there will not be a debug settings that this has activated at least yet. Now that is more than likely going to be something that comes. Yeah, I'll just go in here again. Yeah, it's it's not there. But um, anyway, something that I think is very cool because we're in the very early stages for 3.20, but at least we have the arbitrary read and write now available. Now, John's GitHub is definitely still a work in progress. And so leave a comment down below. Are you on 3.20? What PlayStation 5 version are you on? If you made it this far in the video, then I know you watched to the very end. All right. Thank you so very much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Michael, out.